Hi, I'm Colonel Mike Hopkins, and I'm here with Commander Victor Glover. And we would like to welcome you aboard the International Space Station. And uh, today we're going to give you a tour of the International Space Station. But before we do that, we think it's very important that we give you a little bit of a lesson first, and that's a lesson in floating. And floating can be a little bit uh, disorienting when you first get up here. And so uh, we're going to uh, just give you some examples of how you can float around, uh, orientate, orientate yourself as we're going through station. So we're going to move back here a little bit to point out a couple of important features uh, about the floating up here. So first of all, you notice these blue, what we call handrails. And that's what we use uh, as we're going around station to uh, propel us around to change our direction as well. The other thing you notice are feet. Um, now, we tend to use the top of our feet a lot more up here than the bottom of our feet. So when we're down on Earth, you know, you get these calluses on the bottom of your feet. Well, up here, we don't need them. We actually need them on the tops of our feet because when we come up to these handrails and we're, uh, and we're just staying in one position, we use our tops of our feet to hold us under those handrails. So maybe they shouldn't just be called handrails. Maybe they should also be called foot, foot rails. rails. <laughs> foot rails as well. You know, the other thing I think is kind of interesting when you, when you see astronauts up here uh, doing PAO events and things of that nature, you notice we tend to bob a lot up and down. It's very hard because you're floating, and floating is fun. Um, and it's what you do when you're, uh, when you're in space is you tend to, you tend to kind of bob up and down. Yeah. But anyway, so uh, we're, now we're going to show you a couple of different techniques of, of how you get around station. So Victor is going to demonstrate here. And the first technique of floating through he's going to do is when you're kind of just upright, like he is right now. And so now you see he just pushes off with his hands, and there he goes. Now remember, whatever trajectory, whatever direction he went when he pushed off, that's where he's going until he inputs, uh, until he pushes off of something else, another handrail or something of that nature to change his direction. Now the other, and you're going to see him coming back into the scene here, that's where you're kind of pulling yourself along with your hands. And when you need to go somewhere fast on station, that's often the way that we do it. And I'm going to let Victor uh, uh, Ike give us some tips that he's found when, uh, when he started floating up here as well. So I think the first and most important thing to remember, especially when you think you're getting good at floating around station, is slow is smooth and smooth is fast. Right. Something we say in aviation and is true in space flight as well. And the other thing is you need to think where you're going in the long view. So just like when I learned to drive on the freeway, staying in the lane going fast, you had to really aim way down the lane. If you were looking at the lane just to the sides of you, you tend to go a little erratic. And so if you know you want to go all the way across the module, just slowly orient yourself that direction and try to give a little push in that direction. And I found that to be one of the most helpful things. And then you don't have to make as many or as big corrections yeah. uh, on the way through. Yeah. Yeah, that's some good advice. And then the last piece of advice before we get started is remember you're in space. You're in a microgravity environment right now, and so there is no up or down. And so every single surface up here is a surface that you can translate on. You can sit there and work in any orientation. And uh, so I think the biggest piece of advice there is that remember, as an astronaut, when you're in space, whatever orientation you are in, that is up. And so right now, even though my head is down at the deck, as I look down station, I feel like I am right side up. And so just keep that in mind as we uh, go on our tour because we are going to move around a little bit and change the orientation. But remember, you're always right side up. I don't know. You look a little sideways to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so as we continue our tour of the International Space Station, we're now going to go from the front end of the space station all the way to the back end of the space station. And so we're starting in the SpaceX Crew Dragon Resilience, and this is actually uh, my crew quarters. And we're going to end up in the Russian service module. And so we take the, United, the International Space Station, we divide it up into two segments, or you might consider them two neighborhoods of the, of the same city. And so we have the USOS segment, which is where we are right now, and we're going to end up in the Russian segment, again, in the service module. And so we're going to do this in one pass. We're not going to stop in any of the modules along the way. We'll have a chance. Um, we've either already seen that or later on we'll, we'll take some more time in, in each of the individual modules. Uh, but we're just going to see how long it takes us to go from one end of the space station to the other. So if you're ready, here we go. Set. 
So we are leaving Crew Dragon Resilience, We're coming out of PMA 2 into Node 2. And again, this is where our crew quarters are located in the USOS segments. And now we're passing right into node one. And again, this is where the kitchen, the dining room is for uh, the USOS segment. And we're currently passing into PMA one, which takes us into the Russian segment. And this is the, what we call the FGB. This was the first module that was uh, sent into space. And so we did a little rotation there because you notice these handrails are on the sides and it's a little easier to, uh, to guide myself through the FGB. So we're leaving the FGB now and we're floating into the Russian service module. And this again is where our Russian colleagues, the Russian cosmonauts spend a good part of their day. Uh, this is where they do, they live, they have their meals and, uh, and also uh, where they exercise uh, but and do their science. Uh, but at the same time, we do get together quite often. And so um, we are one crew up here. And even though uh, uh, we have two different neighborhoods, we all uh, have the same goals, and it's to do science and uh, to benefit humanity. And so that is one pass from one end of the station to the other. Okay, as we continue our tour of the International Space Station, we're coming to one of my favorite modules, and that is the airlock. And we're in luck because today, uh, Victor actually has a task in the airlock, and so he's gonna tell us a little bit about that task and uh, give us a little bit more details on, on uh, what happens here in our airlock. So I'm gonna pass the mic to him, and let's hear from Victor. Thanks, Mike. So yes, welcome to the airlock. This is where we begin and end every spacewalk, every EVA, extravehicular activity. And it's divided into two main segments. This is the equipment lock where the suits are stored and where we do all the processing and what we call prep and post, the stuff before an EVA and the stuff after an EVA. And then this portion is the crew lock and that's where the crew goes in. We close this hatch and we depressurize that so that it's uh, equivalent to outside vacuum and the crew goes out on the spacewalk from in there. And so right now I am performing an activity to add some water back to the spacesuits. You see I have two spacesuits here right in front and behind me and we use a little bit of water from each one of them for cooling uh, in the process of a spacewalk and we just had one a couple of days ago and getting ready for the spacewalk coming up in a few days I have to add a little bit of water back to each one and it's a, it has to be very special water so I've got a special water bag here to add water back to the, the uh, spacesuits. Okay we're now in node 2 and this is a very important module for us uh, on board the International Space Station because in the USOS segment this is where the crew quarters are located and so we actually have four crew quarters. Uh, it may be a little hard to tell where they are, but that's actually these four bump outs uh, that you can see are the four USOS crew quarters. And so we have them on the sides, but we also have them on the ceiling and we have them on the deck. And so keep in mind, once you get inside your crew quarters, there's no up or down. So again, it's whatever orientation you are in. Uh, it, it all looks normal when you're inside crew quarters. This module though is interesting as well because it's kind of like your garage. Uh, we also have workbenches in here and a lot of our tools. And so when we're preparing an experiment or repairing uh, some hardware on board, we can take and put it on these workbenches, stabilize it, and then we can get a lot of repair work done. And uh, so now we're going to also, Ike is gonna show us a little bit more so as Mike mentioned, there's no up or down. Whichever way you're facing is the right direction. So I'm going to do this standing on the overhead. And so he mentioned the work areas here. No two is also really unique because it connects so many important things. So off to my left or starboard on the space station, uh, we have the Japanese experimentation module, which consists of the Japanese pressurized module and the logistics module, uh, a place to stow items. But this is uh, the, the, a module of one of our international partners, uh, the Japanese space agency JAXA. And it is, it's, always, it's the one we call the cleanest, nicest looking module. Uh, and so that is Kibo, the Japanese module. And we also have the European laboratory, Columbus. 
and uh, that is to my right. And um, this is the European Space Agency's main facility on the International Space Station. And both of these modules have facilities for running science experiments inside, but also they have the ability to run experiments outside of the space station through uh, pallets and exposed facilities that allow them to do experiments that are either observing space or the Earth or uh, doing something that's based on the being exposed to the space environment. Um, another very important use in this module is stowage. You see all of these bags around me. There are also two spacesuits sitting right here. No, these aren't our people that, uh, that maybe did something wrong and, and we're punishing them. These are just empty spacesuits that we're stowing up here in the overhead. Uh, and behind this, when a space, uh, new spacecraft, the cargo spacecraft docks, we'll move all this out of the way because there's a hatch here that allows us to get to that spacecraft. And forward, this is space station forward, this is where our spacecraft is, our Crew Dragon Resilience, through what we call a pressurized mating adapter and then an international docking adapter. There is a Dragon Resilience, SpaceX's Crew Dragon, down there, and you can kind of see inside of it now. And it also happens to be, if you're counting, Mike showed you four crew quarters earlier, but we have five members of the U.S. orbital segment, the U.S. portion of the International Space Station, and so one of us lives in Crew Dragon Resilience, and it's Mike. That's where Mike stays, uh, where he sleeps. That's where his sleeping bag is. Okay, we're now inside the U.S. laboratory, which is kind of the main module of the U.S. segment. And so in this uh, module, we've got a lot of our life support equipment. Uh, we also have hardware like uh, robotics workstations, uh, but we also have exercise equipment. We have a lot of science equipment in here. And so we're going to go into a little bit more detail right now about some of that uh, hardware that we do have. Uh, the first thing I'd like to point out is over here you can see we've got uh, one of our computers and if you can notice on that computer we've got our timeline and so this is kind of our daily schedule and there's a row for each of the astronauts and cosmonauts on board and this red line indicates the current time but this is also where we start our day and we end our day on the USOS segment uh, so we will gather here and we will actually have what we call a daily planning conference with the ground and so we'll touch base with all of the different uh, mission controls on the ground just to see how the things went during the day or how uh, what's coming up for tomorrow uh, the other piece I'd like to point out in here is the robotic workstation. And so we do have the cannon arm on the outside of station, and we use that a lot for spacewalks, for uh, grappling, uh, visiting supply vehicles, and for also taking images out on station as well. And so this is the robotic workstation. We have three different monitors that we can use to see what the, the arm sees and make sure it stays clear of, of obstructions and other equipment outside. And then this is how we control it. And so this is our translational control, which allows us to move in and out, left, right, up and down, and then our rotational control. And so we can pitch up and down, uh, roll and yaw the robotic arm through these controls. And now we're going to continue further into the lab, and I am going to pass the mic off to Victor. And so, as Mike mentioned, in the lab, we also have exercise equipment and plenty of science hardware and facilities. And so, it's a, a very busy module. And one of the exercise equipment, pieces of exercise equipment that we have on the station is our, our cycle. And we call it CVIS. It's an acronym. Uh, it's a cycle ergometer with a vibration isolation system. And so, this is the ergometer. And you can see a pedal here. And in order to use it, we deploy it. And I'll just partially deploy it so you can see. We use all of the space here on the space station. And so that's the cycle deployed and there are pedals. We all have our own shoes, our clips that we can use. And because we're in space, we don't need to sit down when we use this bike. So there's no seat. You notice there's no seat. There's a back pad and this frame which is attached to the vibration isolation system so that while we're pedaling, we're not shaking the space station back and forth. Uh, this is a uh, what we hold on to while we cycle. And so we hold the handles, we clip into the pedals, and then we get our good workout in. Pretty neat, thinking that you can bike without a seat. We also have lots of different science facilities. And so there are a whole host of them, and I'll just show you two here specifically. This is our microscience glove box. And we recently got uh, a new facility called the Life Sciences Glove Box, which is an expansion of this. Behind this, uh, there's an experiment running right now, so I won't remove the cover 
but you see these two holes here. There are covers there that we can remove and put our hands in this box, and there's a glass window here that we can see in and work on inside uh, through gloves on various types of uh, physical or life sciences. And now our primary life sciences work in, in that environment is done in the gym in the life sciences glove box. But this is a facility that allows us to have power, video, data uh, through through the uh, the hatch here, through the, the, the wall, uh, inside or outside, so that we can get telemetry from the experiments while we run the experiments uh, through the various uh, 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 openings in the box and another experiment that we have running currently pretty neat experiment is going on right now actually where we're looking at how muscle strength changes based on being in microgravity or in 1g like on earth and so we have small worms that move through uh, this really neat um, lattice structure and we can determine how they're moving based on how they move these pillars and so we have to look at that under a microscope and that microscope is here above me. Like Mike said earlier, we use every surface. And so when you operate this microscope, you're actually up on what we call the overhead. And you're using this microscope, and it's connected to this space automated bioproduct lab, SABLE, we call it for short. And those two facilities are here, and the microscope is connected to it. And so we can use these to culture warm or cool things. And then we have the microscope here that we can put items on the microscope. And then just like Earth-based microscopes, we can uh, adjust the focus and, and see the, the uh, subject that we're looking at. So a pretty neat array of facilities and capabilities that we have here in the U.S. laboratory uh, that we affectionately call Destiny. And uh, we could show you a whole bunch of other ones, but we have much more of the space station to show you. As we continue our tour of the International Space Station, Ike and I are now in Node 1. And Node 1 is our kitchen. And so this is uh, where we have our meals, uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And sometimes our Russian colleagues will come down and join us here for uh, dinner, and it's kind of fun. We have seven of us around our, our table over here. Uh, but right now, it's actually just snack time. We love snack time on board, and so Ike and I are going to have a little bit of a snack. And in that process, we're going to kind of show you how we go about having our meals and uh, preparing them as well. So Ike is, uh, what do you got, Ike? Uh, French roast coffee. Okay, Ike's going to have some French roast coffee and so he's going to go over to what we call the PWD and uh, that's where we get our water. And so right now he's dialed in how much water he needs and uh, he hits the button and you can probably see that water bag or that drink bag of coffee is filling up with the warm water. You notice the uh, both the warm or the uh, white and the blue buttons that's for warm water or for uh, cold water as well. And once it's full, he uh, then gets a, he now has a bag of coffee. And so it is a little bit different to uh, have your drinks up here because we can't just have an open cup uh, because then the water would actually go everywhere. And so we have to keep it in these bags like this. And, uh, and then Ike also uh, is not just going to have coffee, but he's also going to have what? What do we got, Ike? Got uh, some trail mix. Okay. And dried pears. Dried pears and trail mix. And so uh, Ike's going to uh, uh, get the, so it comes double packaged up here, a lot of our food. And that's just to uh, protect it and make sure it doesn't uh, uh, get spoiled or anything during the long stays that it might have on station before we actually get to eat it. So now I'm going to pass the mic to Ike and, uh, and then I'm going to get my snack ready. So Mike's got a, uh, a bag of tea. And he is going to do the same thing, add warm water to it. I believe you could have cold tea if you wanted as well, but he's going to have a warm tea. And you've got a really good snack uh, or parts of what's going to become a really good snack. So there's some wheat crackers, peanut butter, and then grape jelly. Peanut butter and jelly crackers. That's a hard one to beat. And so you see the, the table that we have here. This is where we have most of our meals, and it's also expandable. We could unfold the bottom half, and it would be twice as long when we have our cosmonaut colleagues come down. We generally open up the table, and, and we have a nice big family-style table uh, to have our dinners or lunches at. But this is where we have most of our meals, and, uh, yeah, we're going to show you what snack time is like. Well, Victor's getting into his snacks right now. Uh, 
there's, there's a couple utensils that are very important on board station. One of those is a pair of scissors. You always got to have your scissors ready uh, for when you need to eat, when it's uh, snack time or meal time, because uh, uh, some of these bags are hard to get into without the scissors. Uh, then the other thing that's very important, though, in this case, Victor's not going to need it, but in general, the thing that's also very important for us is our spoon. Uh, you notice we have a very long spoon, uh, but that is, allows us to get, uh, when we have some of these other food bags that we have, they're a little bit longer, and so that lets us get all the way down into the food bags. Uh, but that is a critical piece of equipment on board the International Space Station, and if you lose that, uh, it's, it's not a good day when you lose, when you lose your spoon. Uh, but you'll notice, uh, you know, the other advantages of floating. Um, that uh, you don't necessarily have to always get it right the first time. You can catch it up to it. But then the other hand, it does tend to make eating sometimes a little bit messy when you're having soup or something that's uh, got a sauce on it. Oftentimes when you pull it out of the bag with your spoon, you'll have a few drops. And so uh, every day on Saturday, or every Saturday is, uh, is cleaning day for us. And this is one of the nodes that can get kind of messy because meal times do tend to get a little bit messy. So you notice, uh, Victor's meal is, is, or his snack, is something that's prepared, right? So my snack, though, it takes a little bit more work. Uh, I've got to, uh, I'm going to also have to uh, cut open my bag for my wheat crackers. And I will do that right now. Again, scissors are always handy. One of the other things that we tend to do is we never cut all the way through because then it's a, a little piece of trash that can easily get lost up here. And so now I've, I've got my cracker and I'm going to need my spoon. And so I get a little bit of peanut butter. Well, maybe a lot of peanut butter. <laughs> I want some peanut butter now too. <laughs> I'm going to put it on there. The other thing you notice, there's a lot of Velcro on station. And so here, uh, you know, I've got Velcro on my spoon and that allows me to set it down because otherwise it's just going to float away. We don't have the benefits of gravity up here where you can just set something uh, set something on the table and it's going to stay right there. On the other hand, I can let go of my cracker and it's going to stay in the general, general location. And so now I'm uh, tearing open my jelly packet. And this is, uh, as I said earlier, this is grape jelly. I'm a big fan of grape jelly. And voila, I now have a, a cracker, a peanut butter and jelly cracker. Bon appetit, or as we say in Russian, Priyatnova appetita. Okay, we're now in node three, and node three is one of these special modules as well because there's a lot of different activities that happen here in node three. Uh, first of all, it's our um, exercise room for a couple of our pieces of equipment that we have. So we're gonna look over here and you can see our treadmill. And so this is called T2. And the treadmill, what we actually do is we put on a, kind of like a backpacking harness and we connect ourselves to these bungees. And with these bungees, they then hold us down on the treadmill and then uh, once it actually uh, starts starts moving, it's it's not a bad, uh, cardio workout, but it also the impacts as well um, as you're running are important for us um, because they help keep our our bones healthy and uh, and so it's not just for cardio. Uh, moving on into node three here, uh, another very important piece and of equipment we'll just, on board. The, uh, lab HD video and this is our our toilet, and so a couple things about our toilet. Um, you can see there is a can here, and this can, that's where the solid waste is collected. And then the urine is collected okay, in this so hose. The, uh, and so because we collect the like urine separately, we're able to recycle that urine. And uh, there is a lot of equipment that it takes to recycle the urine, turn it into drinking water. And a lot of that is hidden behind these racks that are here in node 3 as well. Now continuing our tour of node 3, this is also, as I mentioned, we have several exercise pieces of equipment in here. And this is our ARED, which is our weightlifting device. And so we are able to lift weights. You can see it's got 
an exercise bar, very much like the exercise bars that you would find in your standard gym, but on the ends, we don't have the, uh, the spot where you would put weights because, of course, the weights wouldn't work up here. What we do have instead are these cylinders that we take to a vacuum. The cylinders up here, we can take them to a vacuum. And then through a series of pulleys and lever arms, we're able to generate weight loads that go anywhere from, you can see, down at about 10 pounds all the way up to 600 pounds. And so we have quite a bit of capability here to, uh, to exercise. Um, behind this wall, where you can see actually quite a bit of storage, uh, there's actually another hatch. And on that hatch is connected a Nanorax airlock. And so we have another capability of taking payloads and putting them outside of the station. Of course, if we have to do that, we actually have to move all of this uh, equipment first, and then we can access the hatch and that, and that airlock. Uh, now one of the other really special places here on board the International Space Station, and this is the cupola. And the cupola is the window that faces down um, at the Earth, and so it's, uh, when you have a few moments, it's always a, a special place to come and look out. But we also use it as well for Earth observations. Uh, we also use it when we're capturing a vehicle, uh, a supply vehicle that comes up, such as a Cygnus, and so we can reach out with a robotic arm, and we have a robotic workstation here that allows us to do that. So I'm going to give you a quick look outside and give you a sense of what our views are like. And it is a pretty incredible view and it really never does get old. The earth is an amazing place and so I'll also give you a sense, you know, not only do you get to see the earth, but you also have pretty good views of the rest of station, the outside of station. And so as you're looking back, you can see the what we call that Russian segment. And there is the Soyuz, where our two crewmates, our two cosmonaut crewmates, Sergei 1 and Sergei 2, they came up in that, as well as Kate Rubens. Behind that is a Progress, which is a supply vehicle. Right next to us is Cygnus, which is one of our supply vehicles. And as you continue looking, that is the U.S. lab connected to Node 2, which is where those crew quarters are located. And if you look off the front of station there, that's where the SpaceX Crew Dragon Resilience is located. And then the gym, the Japanese module, with its ex exposed facility. And then on the other side, is the Columbus module. And so that kind of gives you a, a good sense of the layout of station. And then the other piece that I'll show you is when you look out along the trusses and you can see those solar rays, those giant solar rays that generate the power force, as well as radiators that help us with the cooling. And so we have those solar rays on either side of the station on this side, it's a little harder to see because that Cygnus vehicle is, uh, is in the way, but you can, you can kind of see one of the solar arrays back there. And uh, again, this is a nice view of the outside of station. I just have a couple more modules to show you real quick. Uh, one of them is what we call the PMM, which is basically our storage closet. And so when you take a look inside here, you're going to see that uh, there's not a lot of room in here because storage is at a premium. And so this is inside the, uh, the PMM. Uh, again, it's just a, a big storage closet for us, and we keep it pretty full all the time. Okay, that concludes our tour of the International Space Station. Hopefully you enjoyed it, you learned something, you learned how to float. Uh, so the next time you're in space, you'll, uh, you'll be able to adapt that much quicker. Uh, but it was a real pleasure for uh, Ike and I to be able to give you this tour. And again, we hope to see you real soon back on Earth. Bye, everyone.